Hello everyone, the topic for this week's lab is buckling of columns. To be specific, two objectives will be fulfilled over the course of this lab. First, to demonstrate the effect of support conditions on load carrying capacity of a column, and second, to study the effect of slenderness ratio on the load carrying capacity of a column. In the first part of this lab, we will be using a model column test to determine elastic buckling. In this case, an aluminum column will be tested under various support conditions. The measured buckling capacity will be compared with a predicted capacity using measured dimensions. Note that the modulus of elasticity for the aluminum column is 68,000 megapascals in this lab. A schematic of the test setup is seen in figure 11.1. This shows the aluminum column as pinned at the top and bottom with up to three intermediate supports provided by knife edges. When not needed, the knife edges can be removed using the cap screws and the middle lateral support can simply be slid out. To begin this part of the lab, first remove the column from the test apparatus and measure its cross-section dimensions. You will record the average of these measurements in Table 1 of Section 11.3. Measure the dimensions at at least three locations along the length. Use an electronic caliper for this. Measure the full length of the column using the 1500mm aluminum straight edge provided. This measurement should be recorded to within 0.5mm and you will record this in Table 1. Next, remove all intermediate lateral supports, the knife edges at the top and bottom lateral supports and the entire support assembly at mid-height. Measure the actual spacings between the lateral supports when you conduct the experiments. Record these measurements in Table 2. Power the scale and zero with the bottom end bearing block in place. Note that the scale reads only in pounds or in kilograms. Select pounds since it will give you a slightly better resolution. You will convert this later into newtons. Place the column in the test apparatus without deforming it. Adjust the top loading screw so that the column just fits between the top and bottom bearing blocks. Once the column is in place, turn the loading screw and observe the change in load. Hold the top bearing block while doing this since it has the tendency to spin when you turn the loading screw. Allow the column to buckle and record the maximum load in Table 2. Put in place the lateral supports at mid-height and adjust the knife edges so that they touch the column lightly on each side. Measure the distance from the knife edges to the top of the column and to the bottom of the column. Repeat the step before this and record the load. Note the axis about which buckling takes place and observe where the points of inflection are located. Place all three lateral supports and adjust all the knife edges so that they touch the column lightly on each side. Measure the distances between the knife edges and record these dimensions. Repeat
complete step 5 and record the load. Again, note the axis about which buckling takes place and observe where the points of inflection are located. Finally, remove the middle lateral support assembly. Once again, measure accurately the distance between the lateral supports and the end supports. Load the column as described in step 5 and record the load. For the last time, note the axis about which buckling takes place and observe where the points of inflection are located. Put the mid-height lateral support back in place, switch off the scale, and return to your seats. At this time, both tables 1 and 2 should be filled out and we can move on to the second section of this lab.